Hi, my name is Rob McPhee. I'm really glad to be part of the Rift Connection. Thanks so much to Troy McLagan for getting this thing started. I think it's a great idea and it's going to be a real benefit to all kinds of players around. Uh, today I'm going to uh, look at the topic of two-handed tapping. Most people are pretty familiar with two-handed tapping. It's uh, a nice technique that you can use to do things that you wouldn't be able to do without two-handed tapping, uh, that you wouldn't be able to reach. Um, it's not a gimmick. Some people think it's just a gimmick, you know, because they see people doing it a lot in uh, rock context uh, where maybe they're not really playing stuff that's that interesting. But it's uh, actually a great technique for doing some really interesting music and uh, you can hear all kinds of great players who use that technique uh, to extremely good effect. Uh, back in the late 70s, Eddie Van Halen came on the scene with Van Halen's first album. Uh, that album had a track called Eruption, which millions of people learned how to play. It was a really in-your-face uh, uh, example of how to do that technique in a rock context. And um, he really popularized that technique. It was around before him, of course. Lots of people had done it before. Harvey Mandel, for instance. And, um, but Eddie definitely brought it out to the forefront. And uh, everybody, a lot of people tried to learn how to do it after that. Since him, of course, there's been a million really fantastic players who use it. Uh, you know, everybody from one extreme to another, like uh, uh, Stanley Jordan, uh, um, Chris Broderick with Megadeth. Um, on bass, there's Stu Hamm, there's Dave LaRue on bass, uh, Guthrie Govan. Um, on acoustic guitar, the guy who pioneered a lot of that stuff was uh, Michael Hedges. He pretty much redefined what you could do on acoustic guitar. Um, anyway, so this technique is, uh, anybody who's not familiar with it, it's simply a matter of using your picking hand to uh, play notes on the fretboard. And that can be uh, just as simple as something like that, or it can be infinitely more complicated, uh, such as some of the examples I just gave you of other players. Uh, I didn't learn Eruption, I was too lazy unfortunately, uh, but I immediately saw the potential for that uh, kind of technique. It's a really great technique to use for uh, uh, for clean playing. You can use it for some nice, uh, very delicate effects. Uh, it's really nice for adding extra notes to chords that you can't reach. Maybe uh, in the case of that G chord, I wanted to have a add the low the low note. Uh, so there's lots of things you can do with two-handed tapping. But the specific technique um, that I wanted to show you today, or the specific lick I should say, um, is something a little different. Uh, the lick I was playing at the start of this video uh, is the lick. And uh, you might have noticed it has kind of a, it's kind of got a very, uh, almost a sequencer kind of effect. Like you might hear somebody do on a, with a sequencer on a, on a keyboard or something. And that was kind of the effect I was trying to go for when I, when I first thought that lick up. That lick works really great clean or dirty, and uh, it's a little different than what you might find in certain, um, certain rock applications for doing two-handed tapping. Uh, so if you're not familiar with two-handed tapping, um, you can start off with some simple exercises that will uh, get your hands you know, more agile and stuff. Uh, and you can do simple, just simple exercises like uh, hammer on, go to your G string maybe, hammer on uh, one note with your with your picking hand for instance uh, so maybe you want to play something simple like uh, the open G and then the A note and the B note and let's just say the octave that kind of thing just practice that for a while until you get the hang of, of banging your finger down on the fretboard uh, gets pretty easy after a while once you, once you, once you do it a bit um, anyways this particular lick uh, the way to do this lick is, I'll play it again first and then, uh, and then show you how to play it. So, with distortion, 
Without distortion. That's the lick. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. In the key of E, this is where we're at right now. I'm gonna I'm playing it in the key of E. Uh, you're gonna start, we'll break it down into parts. Uh, the first part is four notes, and then the second part is gonna be three notes. And after that, there are gonna be sections of three notes. Only the first one has four notes. Uh, it starts out on the low E, open, low E. Hammer on the seventh fret with your index finger. Hammer the octave with your little finger. And now here's the part that's a little bit different. It's not terribly different, but it's a bit different. Uh, generally speaking, when people do two-handed tapping techniques, they'll, they'll do things on the same string, such as... So that's all on the same string. I'm not changing strings. It's a very linear kind of approach. In this case, my first note uh, that I'm going to hammer is going to be on the next string. So everything's on the E string for the first three notes here. One, two, three, four. The fourth note, I'm hammering it on the A string. So instead of it all being on one string, your, last, your hammer on note is going to be on the next string. Now, the next set of notes is going to be on the A string, but I'm not going to play the open A string, so that's different than what I did on the first lick. The first lick is open E, B, E, and the B on the 14th fret on the A string. Next lick is just going to be, or the next part of the lick is just going to be uh, on the A string. E, A, and then I'm hammering on the E note on the D string, so again, going to the next string. And that's going to repeat. Now it's going to be on the D string. So now I'm on the high E string. Uh, now at the, this is a point in the lick where you turn around and go back down. All, all That first part's all going up. Now I'm going to hammer on the high E string. This is the part where it turns around. It's uh, I'm going to play the B. 7th fret, high E string, the octave E. Instead of going up and hitting the hitting that F sharp note, I'm going to go to the B string. Just the opposite going back. Uh, so it goes up. So it's the same kind of pattern up and back. Um, I hope you can see this on my cell phone here. My camera crew, they took the weekend off, so I have to use my cell phone. Um, I'll do this lick again uh, fast. As, as I was saying before, do it in parts. Do... Sorry, that's, that, that was wrong. Just practice that first. Practice that for a while until you can get the hang of it. Then move to your next lick, which is going to be on the A string. E. A and E on the D string. One thing about doing two-handed uh, tapping um, that might not be apparent to you if you're not used to doing the technique is that when you pull that finger off after you've tapped, there's a bit of a sideways motion to it. So you're not just tapping directly down and then directly up. You're pulling off slightly to the side because you need to give some you need to get that string ringing for the next note. So you're sort of pulling off slightly sideways. If you're not used to that technique, then practice something simple like, uh, let's go to our D string for instance. Uh, you're going to be at the seventh fret and the octave. That's the pattern we're using, so we'll stick with that. Just practice something really simple like hammer that on, up and go up and back. something like that, or else something using an open D string. Any kind of lick you can think of, you can use your imagination and just get used to practicing hammering those notes on. Uh, so this lick once again, this is at, uh, this is 
uh, at uh, faster speed. This kind of like sounds more of a sequencer kind of effect when you do play it fast. <laughs> And clean. You can uh, take that that kind of uh, approach and uh, do all kinds of different things with it. Using it with a clean setting. If you were to add some effects to that, maybe a bit of delay and maybe a chorus or something like that, uh, you could get some really interesting ambient effects by slowing it down. It doesn't have to be uh, really fast. You can use your imagination. There's a million things you can do. Anyways, um, I hope you were able to get an idea of how to do that lick. Um, and um, I'll be back next time. And next time... I'm going to show you some exercises, simple exercises that will make your bending much more accurate and, um, and a couple of licks to go with it. So thanks a lot.